The 28th edition of the UN Climate Change Conference is about to start in Dubai. At COP28, the world comes together to raise the bar and discuss solutions to the climate crisis. The thing is, that is a rather difficult thing to do if you have nearly 200 countries around the table. So let's take the temperature with Professor Jos Dalbeke, um, EIB uh, Climate Chair here at the European University's Institute School of Transnational Governance and formerly a climate policy architect at the European Commission. Professor Lebeke will be traveling to the COP28 uh, conference, so he's the right person to ask a few questions about this topic. Welcome to Governance This Week. Pleasure to be here. Um, so what are uh, the most critical issues on the agenda during COP28? Well, you could summarize that there are going to be three basic issues. The first is the global stock take. That's what the Paris Agreement has you know, prescribed, that every five years we take stock of what has been done and not has been done. And the global stock take is not going to bring us good news. We are not yet on track uh, compared to the objectives, that, that the targets that were agreed in the Paris Agreement. The Paris Agreement says we should reduce by the second half of the century up to one and a half degrees maximum warming. It looks like we are going to be at least at two and a half degrees global warming. So not good news. So in the future, we will have to review our policy programs. So first, the global stock take. The second is that there is a lot to do about the damage and the loss done by climate change. And there is a fund created last year, mm. the Loss and Damage Fund. But that fund was created without funding. Mm. So the funding must now be brought on the table. And that funding is, of course, primarily for the poorest countries in the world who are suffering the worst consequences of climate change. We all are not seeing the nice or we are seeing the not so nice, you know, consequences of climate change, but we can afford it. We are rich countries. There are countries who can hardly afford it. And so the loss and damage fund is going to be for them and the funding is going to start. Mm -hmm. That's the point two. And then we also will see that uh, leaders of governments are going to come together in Dubai and the headline target that is being pronounced and that is being pushed for, not least by the Europeans, is to triple the amount of renewable energy between now and 2030 and to double the energy efficiency between now and 2030. So these are suggestions made by the International Energy Agency and I hope that uh, leaders of governments are going to stick to those targets. And it is not, you know, having, uh, you know, these are not empty promises being made by a chairman that is coming from an oil and gas exploiting country. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it would be good uh, for the world uh, at large that we, we have the technology, we know how to do it. To, to have an intensive effort towards renewable energy and improving energy efficiency, while we know that we are in an oil and gas country, basically, yeah. in Dubai. So if Mr. Sultan Jabbar was to push that forward and succeed that uh, from the heads of state and government, that would be a meaningful result. You've already touched upon it a little bit. Uh we are in, in, in quite a dire situation, also emphasized by a recent UNEP report. We're not doing uh, what is necessary. We need to raise that, that bar that we mentioned. Um, but, but let's zoom in a little bit on what happened uh, between last year's conference. Uh, the, the climate change conference takes place every year. Last year was COP27. We're now moving to COP28. Uh, tell us a bit more uh, what has happened between last year and this year's edition. What is where are we making progress and where are we stalling? I think on implementation of the plans and the promises that were done, we are making good progress. And good progress comes, you know, not unsurprisingly, because of the disaster we saw over the last year, year and a half, which is the war in Ukraine, that has a, pressure, uh, a pressurized effect on energy markets. So mm. energy has been expensive, and in particular, fossil fuel energy has been expensive. And so we are accelerating the taking up of renewable energy and energy efficiency. Hence, the target that uh, is being put forward, it is meaningful for the new geopolitical situation we are in, 
because our energy is much more expensive. But if you are a poor country, you are forced to pay world market prices for energy. So that is really hurting these economies. And what we are seeing is indeed that the take up of renewable energy in the world has been spectacular. We do a lot in Europe, but what is being done in countries like India or China is absolutely spectacular. And so there is a, a piece of good news to be brought uh, forward as well. Of course, the main problem that is still there is coal. Uh, coal is the worst culprit uh, for climate change and it is still being used mm -hmm. in massive amounts, not least in the countries I just mentioned. In India and China, coal is a major driver of electricity production and these countries must you know, get on with the job, look for alternative employment and alternative economic activities in those regions that are living on coal mining. Because that's the real question. It's not re only reducing coal, but also people living in regions where there is nothing else but coal mining to make sure that they have another job, that they, there is an alternative investment that is taking place. And on that, we have in Europe a good story to tell. We have been exploiting and been building our future on coal since the Industrial Revolution, but we have been moving out of coal. And the last coal you know, driven countries, if I may say it mm -hmm. like that, like Poland or Romania and Bulgaria. Also, these countries are investing very rapidly in renewable energy and in saving energy. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is uh, there is some 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 good. There is some progress being made. There's a lot of uh, ground still uh, to cover, um, and uh, of course we're going to need technological innovation. Uh, we're going to need new solutions. Is there anything uh, that we can expect uh, in Dubai in this particular area? It may well be. As we saw last year, uh, was the COP was in Egypt. It was in the same region, by way of speaking. And there was a lot of talk about low carbon energy carriers, in particular hydrogen. And now with the new situation we have in Europe, the new geopolitical situation, we have to move out of iron and steel that we have been producing in our blast furnaces. We have to find other production processes, other carriers, energy carriers in the chemical industry, in the cement industry, etc. And that is where a lot of progress is currently being made. And I would not be surprised when it comes to hydrogen produced with renewable energy. Uh, we will see more of what we saw last year in Egypt because uh, you know it would be best if this hydrogen is produced with renewable energy but in the meantime as there is not yet enough renewable energy this hydrogen is going to be produced partly with gas hopefully with gas from which we are taking out the carbon content in making it a useful uh, a carrier an energy carrier that is helping us to decarbonize our industry mm. You are going to lead the SDG uh, climate delegation to the, the climate conference in, in Dubai. What are the kind of issues that uh, your team is going to focus on in particular? Well, we have a strong story on carbon pricing. Uh, there is the very easy notion to understand when emitting carbon is for free. How would you care about that? So if you can put a price on carbon, then that changes the behavior of consumers and producers. And we did that in Europe. Today, a, a ton of carbon that you have to pay for on the market is between 80 and 100 euros per ton, which is a lot of money compared to what we did in the past. So the whole world is looking at us because the whole world wants to learn from our experience uh, on how to put a price on carbon. And the whole world is going to do that on their own terms. They are not going to follow the European example blindly, but the Chinese are already doing it the Chinese way. Mm -hmm. And the Africans are looking at their variation of carbon pricing and the Latin Americans are also coming forward. So carbon pricing is spreading around the world much faster than what we thought would happen. And we are very much in demand because we uh, were at the basis of the, of the European carbon market. 
we are in our lessons here at the SDG developing carbon pricing at length. We have lots of policy debates on that. And so we have a good story to tell. Also a good story because we know what worked, but also we know what worked less mm. compared to what we anticipated. And sharing these experiences, whether they are good or less good, I think is what uh, you know, our partners in the world are appreciating a lot. Yeah. If we talk about um, carbon pricing and carbon markets, among the, uh, the technical experts, there's a lot, of a lot of talk about Article 6 and how the rules of these markets are, go are going to be defined. Without making it uh, too difficult uh, for the laymen and women who are viewing this, but what, what are these, these rules that we're talking about? What, what are we looking at? Well, the good news is that on Article 6, not just than a couple of days ago, there was a deal that is well prepared to bring on the table of the negotiators in Dubai. So it is well possible that a useful deal will be made in the context of the Paris Agreement. It was one of the last areas that was not sorted out. And what is the issue? That is, when you pay for carbon, you have to make sure that what you are paying for is real. And there has been a lot of, you know, uh, playing around with figures. Uh, there have been a few scandals out there as well, where people are saying we are paying for carbon, but this is not real. So we need rules. And the United Nations under Article 6.4 is now developing those rules. And that's good news on itself in order to prevent that greenwashing that is undermining the confidence of the consumer, the confidence also of producers. Nobody wants to be fooled that this is evacuated and that is going to be sooner rather than later a, a thing of the past. Hmm. So higher uh, quality standards uh, and rules uh, in this particular part of the, of the game. Uh, as you are about to uh, board a plane to Dubai, um, what, what, with, with, with what kind of feeling are you going to get on that plane to that conference? You know, the, the climate conference, as we have said, is an, is an annual uh, summit. And of course, between the summits, there are uh, the more technical um, conversations going on between experts. Uh, progress is, is slow. With what kind of feeling do you get on that plane and to that conference? Um, I would have to admit with a rather philosophical feeling because I have been in so many COPs and I was involved in the negotiations, and these are really tiring negotiations, hard negotiations. As you said at the beginning, 200 nations have to agree with consensus. It's almost impossible to reach that. So uh, I have gone through a little bit of suffering in all those scops, and I praise myself that I'm not going to be involved in the negotiations, but a big part of the people, the most important part of the people present at the COP, are not involved in the negotiations, but are sharing experiences on implementation. So it is about technology, it is about policies, it's about mobility, it's about how to manufacture products that are much less in carbon. So this exchange of experiences, that is where we are going to contribute a lot. And as I mentioned, you know, on carbon pricing, we have a good story to tell, but it's not only carbon pricing, you know, the whole issue of sustainable finance. The whole issue of low carbon innovation in our companies, you know, is very important. And also there, I see since the Green Deal in Europe that our companies are taking leadership in that. Uh, we have already green steel being produced or green aluminum or green cement. You know, it's on its way. It's not yet the majority of the companies, but the forerunners, the, those who are, you know, uh, leapfrogging the technology are already in the market and uh, also they are going to be present there in, in numbers, not only from us, but from across the globe. Yeah. Well, Professor Jos de Beke, good luck in Dubai. The world is watching. This is a, a key conference. Personally, for myself, I think the last time I attended a, a COP was in Durban. It's quite a while back, uh, but uh, I will be watching with a lot of interest and uh, as will our viewers who are following us from home. Uh, this was another episode of Governance This Week. We'll be back soon. If you haven't subscribed yet, do so now to make sure that you also catch uh, the upcoming episodes of this series. And thank you for watching.